Hey yo ladies and gents, Jam here from Jam's Mini Mods and in today's video I'm going to take this pile of sprues and turn it into a 500 points Dark Angels army. Now I'm going to try and kit this out so it can be run as a boarding patrol or just a regular combat patrol as well. And I'll be going through pretty much every step that I go through, through building, a bit of green stuff, work, painting, all that kind of stuff, basing of course. So Now speaking about basing, this is probably where we need to start because we need our models to stand on something, right? And I wanted something that would really fit in with Dark Angels, but I also wanted it to be something that could be a cathedral or a ruined planet surface, but also could maybe be just broken flagstone on a gothic spaceship kind of thing. Well, actually, spoilers, towards the end of the video I decided to put leaves on the base, which doesn't quite go with the gothic spaceship vibe, but anyway, products you're going to need for this is a sheet of plastic card or whatever it's called in different countries and stuff like that. You're going to need some cork, obviously your usual plastic and super glue, depending on which part you're gluing. And just a light sprinkling of human skulls, you know, what wouldn't be a gothic 40k without some skulls lying about. Now, some of my bases, not all, are going to have some cork on them, just to lift them up a little bit. Maybe just like the, the sergeants and stuff like that. So what you want to do is break off your cork, you know, tear it up into the rough shape that you want. Use a bit of super glue to glue it onto the base. And once that's on there and it's all dried up, you get your hobby knife. And just try and cut the hanging off bits to be nice and flush with the base. Obviously be careful not to cut yourself, but it's a really relatively easy process. Now that I've got the main structure of my base down, it's time to get those flagstones down. Now this is a pretty time consuming way to go about things. There might be easier ways to do stuff like this, but I like that I've got a little bit more control over it when I'm just carving things out individually by hand. Now usually you'll probably want a metal ruler or something like that while cutting the strips off, you know, just measuring it and all that. But I found these little sprue tabby things from Forge World with the exact width that I wanted. So I basically just use that as my measuring stick. I just cut out little strips the same size of that thing. Sprue gate or whatever it's called. Now if you want, you can cut every single stone out to be the exact same size, but... I'm going to get them mostly the same size, but I don't mind having a few that are a bit bigger. You know, sometimes when you see big flagstone floors and stuff like that, there's some variance there. They're not all exactly the same sometimes, which also means uh, I don't really have to measure anything else. It'll make things much quicker. Now that you've got your slab stone things sliced out, you actually want to make them look like they're flagstone. So what you want to do is you want to start slicing up the edges all the way around. You preferably want to do it at a bit of a tapered edge, if you know what I mean. Just make it a bit of a slope down kind of cut. And you don't want to be too regular with it. You just kind of go a bit random, slicing and dicing in places. Later on, I'll also cut out big chunks and stuff like that. Make, make it look like the flagstone's cracked and split open and stuff like that. You really can go quite wild with this. Now for the top of the stone, you obviously don't want it to be super smooth either. So... I'm just going to get the point of my hobby knife and just kind of drag it across the top in little, little chips. Getting, scraping out tiny little bits of the plastic just to rough it up a bit. And here's a quick example of me just carving out bigger chunks where the stones split open and stuff like that a bit more. And just remember when you're gluing plastic card down to cork or anything like that, you want to use super glue. But if you're doing it straight onto the base, you can actually use plastic glue. And obviously that means you can use plastic glue to glue your models to the plastic card as well. Now you can see I get the kind of rough shape down. You got a lot of overhanging bits and stuff. Don't worry, I won't be leaving it like that. What I will do at this point is I'll get my clippers and just start snipping around the edge of the base, getting all those overhanging bits of plastic card off. And then later I'll come in with my hobby knife to get it a bit more smoother cut. And also you can use files as well, like, you know... Um, nail files because they are quite soft and they're quite easy to work around bases like this and so I will just run that across the edges at some point. Now one last thing I like to do to the base just to get rid of that smoothness a little bit more is once again I'll hit the top of the model with that nail file or if you have one of these little dremel bits like this you can run them along but to be honest the nail file probably quicker and easier. Now not to drag this video out too long just about basing I slap my skulls down in random 
areas throughout all my bases. This is just from the Citadel Skull Kit. And then if you want, you can get some small pebbles and stuff and super glue them down in places just to give a bit more like height differences in certain areas. And then you've got two options. You can either use texture paste or just the classic sand. Now at first I was kind of using texture paste here, sprinkling a bit of sand on top of that just to get a bit more grit in there. But in the end I actually found all these smaller models and stuff like that. It was actually easier to blob down some super glue and then just move it around with a toothpick into all the nooks and crannies and then just sprinkle some sand on top. And it's a much stronger bond as well. And here are all my models built and based. Like I said before, I think the basing takes a bit of time, but definitely well worth it. Now, next up, as you've seen, my models are all built, but they haven't really got a Dark Angel flavor just yet. Now, luckily, throughout the Primaris line, there's a lot of, like, gothic trinkets and stuff like that. But I did also pick up the Dark Angel's Ravenwing upgrade sprue and the Dark Angel's Veterans sprue. Now, some of this was actually given to me by my local friendly game store owner so i really appreciate that that helped me out a lot now i'm not going to go too over the top with the standard troops kind of guys i'm just going to throw a little trinket here and there if you look at any dark angels artwork or even just like the gw models and normally the the usual dark angel troops aren't overly kitted out it's normally the sergeants and the hqs and the death wings that have all the robes and everything like that and also once again easier to paint now I'm just going to montage my way through all these little trinkets. Now for the Blade God veterans, because they are Deathwing, I was thinking of giving them all hoods. But then I was looking at the actual Deathwing Terminators and none of them have hoods except for the Knights. So I figured, okay, it doesn't really make sense for these guys to all be hooded up then. I mean, it would look cool if you had all the bits lying around, and why not? But I just did it for the leader of this group. Now, moving on to the leader of this army, which will be an interrogated chaplain, which, for me, when I think of Dark Angels, I think of chaplains, and especially inter interrogated chaplains. So I had to have one leading this force. But I couldn't just give him the standard... GW Crozier, so it just didn't quite look right for Dark Angels. I had to make something myself. So this Crozier is from the Indominus Chaplain, but I'm going to actually slice the top of this off and just use the, the hand and the handle, I guess. And to replace that, I'm going to be using this Dark Angels icon. I think it's from the Ravenwing upgrade sprue. But just that thing alone was kind of boring and didn't look Crozier enough for me. So I cut the skull halo thing off the original Crozius very slowly and neatly, trying to get that off there. And that's going to glue nicely on top of the Dark Angels iconography Crozius that I've made now. But before I get onto that, obviously I need quite a sturdy bond between the handle and the Crozius head. So I'm going to drill a hole on either side, and I'm going to super glue a bit of paper clip in there to pin them two bits together with super glue and all that, of course. Now for the body of the interrogator chaplain, I'm using the Primaris Captain model. And the reason why I'm using this model is because I found this bit of artwork online. And I thought it was really cool, kind of fits an interrogator vibe. And also the Captain model's pose pretty much fits this perfectly. And it's got that little robe, loincloth things as well that match quite well. But because I'm going to be green stuffing robes onto this guy... One of the first things I need to do is slice off his chest aquila and the rope and everything. Get the majority off with my hobby knife then I'll come in with a file just to smooth out. It doesn't need to be perfect once again because there's going to be green stuff over it later. Now obviously I needed a pointing hand which luckily I have some lying around. I think this kit actually originally comes with one anyway but I couldn't find it. So I got this one from some easy build kit probably. And I just, well, stick that on there. Everything fits pretty perfect. Now next step, I was going to green stuff a hood on top of the chaplain on the bike head that I had lying around. But then I discovered I had this OG Primaris chaplain helmet lying around as well. So this pretty much fit perfectly. It's got the hood on there, the skull face, everything. So perfect for a Dark Angel chaplain. Now I'm going to leave the model there for now. And I'm going to start on doing some like the 
robes and everything. But one of the main reasons why I wanted to do a Dark Angel's Army is because I wanted to practice sculpting cloth. And not only sculpting cloth, I wanted to try using green putt or whatever people want to call it. I pretty much always just use green stuff and I'm quite used to it. So I wanted to step out of my comfort zone a little bit, see how this stuff works. Now I've used it before for space wolfy things and I've done a lot of space wolf stuff, but cloth is a whole different thing. It has to be very neat, you have to get the flow and everything, that's why I want to practice it. So anyway, green putt is basically you mix up your green stuff as you normally would and you do the exact same stuff for milli putt and then once those two different products are mixed, then you smash them together, mix them together and it creates a whole new substance that's much harder than green stuff but also better to blend in and smooth different bits together than green stuff as well. So, but not as brittle and stuff as mini puck. It's kind of like a good middle ground. It's perfect for cloth and stuff like that. But to be honest, I think my green stuff and possibly a mini puck might be quite old at this point. They were quite tough to mix and didn't really end up in a great kind of place there. But like I said, I was just trying to, trying to do something new here. But I'm going to be practicing on one of my sergeants before I go to the interrogator chaplain. So I roll my green stuff out into a ball, then I rolling pin it out with a paintbrush, trying to keep it nice and smooth because gotta remember this is cloth. Then I just start slicing like the bits out into rough sizes and shapes that I need. And as you can see I got the loincloth bit to the length and size that I wanted. Once it starts to set a little bit more I can move it around and get it into the position I want as well. As for the top part of the chest I just kind of make another rectangular shape but then I cut a triangle out of the top because they're kind of making that v-neck shape and I'll eventually just work that into all the places around the neck and stuff to get it to fit. That's the nice thing about green putt is it's very smooth and you can shape it very easily. As for the tools I'm using, I'm using a mix between just your classic old wet toothpick, remember to keep everything damp as well, my silicon color shapers, these things are amazing for any sort of sculpting work. And I do have some wax carvers, which I don't really use too much. I don't like how big they are and how hard the steel is, but they are really good for smoothing things out and getting sharp edges though. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using my color shapers or my toothpicks to kind of press in detail. So we're going to get some folds around the neck and maybe around the belt area so it looks like it's tucked in there. This is what I would usually do just to get some shape into my green stuff or something like that. Which works perfectly for pieces like this on the chest and all that. But one of the main reasons why you would use green putt instead of just green stuff is because once the green putt is cured and hard, you can actually layer more green putt on top and you can blend it in really, really smoothly. Much more than you can do with green stuff. So what I do now is I get more green putt onto the loincloth bit there and I roll up little sausages and I place them down and now these are going to get blended into act as kind of ripples and movement in the fabric. For some reason I don't really have footage of me doing it on the loincloth so I'll show it getting done on the interrogated chaplain. And as you can see there I've got all my little sausagey rope bits down where I think there should be ripples in this cloth. Then I just start pushing down the edges just quite kind of roughly of each sausage so we kind of get the rough shape of, shape of where these ruffles will be going. Now with keeping my tools wet between using the silicon shapers and a wet paintbrush I just keep on smoothing the edges out, smoothing the green, oh green putt I should say not green stuff until I just get it to a point that I, I like. I wanted to get it quite smooth but in hindsight I never like using oils like Vaseline or linseed oil or anything like that on my models for sculpting so I always think like oh, you gotta clean it down and stuff but because this is actually a trial for me as well I've kind of realized if I'm going to be doing fancy HQ models like this in the future I'm just going to use oils because I feel like I could have got a much better and smoother blends out of this if I just had that on the model instead of just using water because I have found with water the green part can get kind of brittle and start falling apart a little bit which ended up making the cloth look a little bit dodgy in some areas. So learn from my mistakes. Now with the green part kind of smoothed out to where I want it, like I said, just using a wet paintbrush at the end there just to really get it smoothed out, it's time to stick the rest of the bits together. And a side note, green putt's really, really easy to 
sand down and cut as well so if anything gets in your way you can just kind of sand it down so it doesn't now the backpack i'm going to be sticking on this guy is from that firstborn chaplain i showed at the beginning of the video i had these little building instructions thing there i felt like it was very very over the top and gothic and fit that artwork quite well as well but the next step i had to do is get an arm that was kind of in the position that i wanted and i just glued that on with a shoulder pad that's actually from the new Horus Heresy plastic marines that just came out. Well, I'd say just quite a while ago now. I didn't want anything too fancy for the chaplet. I thought something a bit more like rugged and brutal kind of fits the whole interrogator thing. And then I just stick the croziers I made earlier onto the arm and just uh, got it into the position that I needed. And with that, with the whole main bit of this model down, I do slap a couple more dark angel -y accessories around the belt there just to bulk him out make him look a little bit more fancy and i think he turned out pretty decently like i said it's my one of my biggest kind of attempts at using green putt in this kind of way there's definitely stuff i can improve on 100 percent for the next time i uh, that's kind of the reason why i did this but while i've got some leftover green putt lying around i'm actually gonna make some really quick and easy feathers because that's kind of a recurring theme throughout Dark Angels as well. And like I said, these are going to be very rudimentary quick ones. So I'm just going to cut out a very rough feather shape here. Very similar to the ones that you got in the Dark Vengeance box set on the Deathwing Terminator and stuff. They're very triangular and stuff like that. And all I did was I used my hobby knife to press down a line down the middle of the feather. And then just smaller lines down at an angle down each side of that line as well to kind of make it look like the the feathery bits throughout like i said very very quick and easy and i'm just going to slap them onto various models and you'll see that later now with everything built and customized and accessorized it's time to paint now weirdly by kind of accident i've got all three different colors of the dark angel so if you don't know dark angels have different wings so they've got the death wing the raven wing and then you just got your normal tactical marines now your normal standard army they're dark green death wing are a bone color and raven wing are black so i've obviously got the death wing i've got the normal guys and my chaplain's gonna be black anyway so i've kind of just got all of them here now i'll be using an airbrush to prime but to be honest you can just go outside and use the rattle can there's no problem if anything, it'll probably be quicker because I ended up having quite a few issues with my airbrush. I haven't used it in quite a long time. So yeah, I think some of the paint ended up getting on a bit thicker than it should have. But just briefly for the black and the dark green, I just primed them in black. And with the Dreadwing, Dreadwing? Oh, that's Horus Heresy, I think. For the Deathwing, I primed in black, but then I gave a nice zenithal of a really light gray primer all over because they're going to be a lighter color. I will also be airbrushing the main colors down. So I'll be using Caliban green for the base of my green dudes. Now again, I'm using an airbrush, but you can just use a normal paintbrush for basing your models. I know a lot of people, as soon as they see an airbrush in a video, they just kind of check out, but literally it just speeds me up. It doesn't do anything different that I couldn't do with a paintbrush. So I just pour some Caliban green in there and chuck in some airbrush thinner as well. And that will very quickly give me a nice smooth base coat now for the death wing that kind of bone color i know from experience from my death guard armings there are similar color scheme to this that zandri dust and his shapti bone have absolutely terrible coverage i hate painting these colors especially with a brush they're a little bit easier with an airbrush so i'm actually going to go zandri dust first just because it's a darker base coating paint spray that all over and then now we're just going to do the exact same process again with you shapti bone that's going to be my main base coat at the end there now on to actual painting part i'm going to be going through this pretty quickly so every color i use on this model or maybe two different models i'll be showing throughout this thing i'll be using the same colors throughout the entire army so i'll be using the same bones and blues and everything throughout and one thing i will also be doing is i always try and paint every single model to this exact same standard I want every guy to be like to the best of my abilities and because of that I never get anything done. So I'm going to be cutting a bit of corners with this army. I'm going to skip some steps for now because there's nobody saying you can never come back to an army. 
I can get this thing done, go have some games, I can actually have it out there and play. And then when I've got free time, I'll add on some extra highlights, some blends, whatever I want to do, if and when I want to do it. You know what they say, perfect is the enemy of good. Let's just get this done. But in saying that, I start off with a very tedious process, and that's pin washing or recess shading. So I just get a null oil for the green, and I'll just slowly be putting shade in, into all the recesses and stuff like that. I did try and wash the entire model for one, but then I just felt like it was a bit too dark and a bit too dirty and stuff like that, and you'll have to go over and re-highlight with Caliban Green again, so I felt it was just quicker to do recess shading for these. But to be honest, that's another step you could skip, because the green's quite dark. After you've done highlights, you probably won't even notice it anyway. Now for any robes and cloth like that, I'll be doing the exact same color scheme for the Deathwing armor. So I'll be doing Xandru Dust to start with, going up to use Shabti Bone. And when that's all done, I'll be doing an all-over wash of Seraphim Sepia. And while I've got the Seraphim Sepia out and waiting for it to dry on that model, I also do a pin wash, or once again, recess shade or Seraphim Sepia, all throughout the Deathwing as well. But yeah, going back to my Green Wing guy, I'll be layering your Shabti Bone again, just leaving the recesses shaded with that Seraphim Sepia. Now the last step for the robes, and also for the Deathwing themselves, I'll be highlighting with Screaming Skull. Now this is actually a really dried up pot, so it made it a little bit difficult for me, because I need to go out and buy some more, but just your standard kind of edge highlighting stuff with this. Now moving on to any whites throughout the army, I'll be doing an initial base coat with Celestra Grey. And then I'll be going over with Ulthuan Grey, if that's how you pronounce it. Just to get all that white popping a little bit more. And then I'll be shading all my whites, preferably recess shading if I can in certain areas, with known oil. Later we'll come back to the whites and highlight with a bit of more of a pure white but for now let's move on to the brown details and that'll be all the the bags and ropes and straps like that now i want to go for a reddish brown because you know green and red look good together so i'm trying to go for reddish hues where i can so i'm going to go for doom bull brown as my base coat throughout and once all the brown bits are base coated i'll come back and wash them all later when i do all the washes together with agrax and non oil and all those kind of things but I wanted to paint the tips of my feathers in black, so I've just used Abaddon Black for that, making sure I've painted it in the same kind of direction as the angle of the feathery bits. And like I said earlier, I'll come back to the whites now, and I'll use Korax White in this case to edge highlight the bits of the feathers, the icons, any sort of little white bits dangling on models. Now quickly switching over to a different model because this guy doesn't have a gun, all my gun casings throughout the entire army are going to be red. So I'm going to start off with Mephiston red throughout. Well, not just gun casings, I should say. It's all weapons, really. So chainsaws will be red and parts of the Blade God veteran shields will be red as well. Like I said, I'm using the same colors throughout the entire army where I can to really tie it all together. Now, usually you want to be kind of as neat as you can. But for example, on the shield here, if I do go over onto the edges, later I'll be putting gold and, well, brass over there anyway, so that will clean it up. Oh, and I also use Abaddon Black for the Under Armour bits between the joints. And I've got to say, when it comes to painting Marines, I absolutely hate doing these joint Under Armour bits. And backpacks, I just hate doing both of those. But now moving on to the metallics, I'm only going to be going for two different types, silver and gold. Now initially I started off with Balthazar Gold as the base for all my goldiness, but I ended up switching over to Warp Lock Bronze, I think it's called, to have a bit more of a bronze tone throughout. But Lead Belt will be used throughout the whole entire army. So there will be bits like the hammerhead on this guy, all the swords, some of the trinkets, some of the chains, all that kind of stuff throughout the entire army. Bits of the Hellblaster guns as well. Now moving on to one of my favorite paints, weirdly enough, and that's Rakarth Flesh. Now if, if you want any pale Caucasian-y skin tones, you can use Rakarth Flesh on faces. I will do that on a few, but I also use it on all my purity seals. But now we're on to washing phase. This is one of my favorite stages. I hate base coating models, but that's all done now. Now I'm going to be using non-oil, Agrax Earth, Earth Shade, and Seraphim Sepia throughout. So obviously the non-oil will be going on all the silver bits, 
and also on the browns. Whereas the Agrax Earthshade will be going on on my golds and brasses and the reds throughout the army as well. Oh, and of course they're going to go on the purity seals. Rakar's flesh really changes on depending on the wash that you use. And speaking of that, I use Reichland flesh shade throughout the entire army for every different flesh tone that I have. Now usually in my painting process, I'll get my base coats done, my wash is done, and particularly with Space Marines, then I'll go back with my original Power Armor color, which will be Caliban Green in this case, or Ushapti Bone for the Deathwing, Abigen Black for the Chaplain, or whatever it is. And I'll just clean up the whole model, make sure any places where I overspilled different colors and stuff like that, I'll clean it all up. And once it's all cleaned up, then it's edge highlighting time. Now my first color is Warpstone Glow. I'm going to edge highlight the entire model with this color now. And once that painstaking process is done and move on to mood green now i'm going to edge highlight this but i'm going to stick to the upper parts of the models just get the the parts that would hit the light the most but to be perfectly honest if you want to save time you could just go straight to mood green and just highlight that everywhere instead that's probably what i would do in the future and next up i use dawnstone to highlight the under armor now moving on to the brown once again, trying to keep that reddish tone to it, I'm going to be using Was Ducker Red and Squig Orange to highlight. Now the Was Ducker I'll use as more of a quite a thick edge highlight kind of vibe to it, whereas the Squig Orange will just be touching corners, adding little scratches and stuff like that throughout. Now when I was highlighting the silver for this model, I think I went a bit too bright and shiny for my personal taste. So for the rest of the army, I was just going to use Stormhost Silver just to edge highlight and leave the original dark steel beneath it without layering a shiny silver over everything. Now with pretty much everything done for the green dudes, moving on to the blade guard veterans because they're a little bit different. Like I said before, I'll be using warp lock bronze for pretty much everything. So the shield rims, the middle shield bit, the iron halo, all the little trinkety bits throughout the ROM is just going to be warp lock bronze. Now we'll come back to highlighting the bronze in a second, but next thing I wanted to do was plasma glow on all my hell blasters and also the sergeant on my blade guard veterans. Now usually you can maybe try and use your airbrush if you got one to kind of get a nice OSL spray effect going on, but I thought quick and easy just using a dry brush. So I painted the coils white first of all, get a nice shiny base coat of that going on. Then I get a tiny makeup brush. You definitely want to get some makeup brushes if you're doing any sort of dry brushing. They are perfect for it. And I'm going to start off with my darkest colors. So I just selected a random, well, selection of blues. So I started with McCrag blue here. And I gave a, a bit more of a wider overall dry brush. Like I say, on the casing and everything. So it's got that glow going on. And then once that was done, I moved on to a Latok blue. I believe that's how you pronounce that. GW's name is always a bit funky. And I just did a bit of a smaller dry brush that time, so you'd even the darker, and then slowly going into the middle with a lighter blue. And then finally, my last highlight I do on here is blue horror. And I just try to keep that to the center of the coils as much as I could. Just to the tops and the corners there. Just so it looks like the it's going from the darker light, so it's kind of faded down into the darkness, and it's lighter at the center. And as you can see here, like I've said before, keeping the same colors on these Blade Guard veteran Deathwing guys, I'm going to be edge highlighting all their armor with Screaming Skull. Now with that, pretty much all the models are done. Like I said, uh, some steps have been skipped, but the army's tabletop ready. Maybe slightly above, like I said, we can come back to it another time. But now we've got to paint the bases. And for that, I'm going to be using Mechanicus Standard Grey as the base coat for this. And I will be painting this everywhere. We're not going to use a different color on this base here. Because like I said, I want this to be a flagstone, concrete -y kind of place that's just been pulverized. So everything's kind of the same color throughout. Obviously the skulls later will paint differently, but yeah. But once the base is done, I'm going to get out Agrax Earthshade. Now in hindsight, if I wanted to keep it a bit more stony, maybe going for Nuln Oil would have been a better idea. And once that's dried, it's down to dry brushing again. So I'm going to use Dawnstone as my overall dry brush. I'm going to try and hit everywhere with this. And then once I've done that, I'll move on to Administratum Grey just to kind of get the main 
points a bit more highlighted up. And when it comes to dry brushing bases with your model on them, I never really worry too much about hitting the feet and stuff like that with the grey because I actually find that ties the model into the base a lot better. It looks like dust has kicked up and stuff like that. Obviously don't you don't want to go too over the top, but those accidental hits there, they work really, really nicely there. So that's what I always do like that. But now with the model done, I felt like it was maybe a bit too samey throughout. So I've kept the stone color pretty much the same. But what I've done is I've gone in with some more agrax between the cracks of the stones. I've put another layer just so the stones will pop out more. But I've also put a light layer of agrax throughout the, the sand in that. So that's a, a different tone where it's been crushed up compared to the flagstone that's still intact. And because I went for that kind of brownish tone and everything, and I thought the base could have done with a bit more, I just thought, you know what, screw it, I'm going to go for leaves. I don't know, maybe they've got trees on Dark Angel spaceships, I don't know, <laughs> but I thought it would help the model pop. So I've got these spring leaves from Green Stuff World, but I think you can buy them from anywhere really. I can't remember what the, these leaves are actually called. You can just find them in nature as well if you have those kinds of trees around. But buying a part of this is more than you'll ever need, really. Now, if you wanted, you could just chuck a bit of PVA glue here and there and just sprinkle the leaves on and just let it do what it wants to do. But because I'm apparently a psychopath and I have to make my life difficult, I'm going to individually glue leaves down where I want them. So I'm going to be using little tiny little blobs of super glue just to get the leaves where I want them. Now, I do want some sections of different bases to have more piles of leaves. So I'll put a lot more super glue down, just throw a whole bunch of leaves on, move them to where I want. If I want more, I'll just chuck a bit of super glue on top of those leaves and put a couple more leaves on top of there again. Just so we get some variance throughout. It's not just one or two leaves just lying around. But once I leafed up their entire army, I felt like the spring leaves were a bit too bright. They were drawing my eye down because the green models are really dark and you've got these light leaves on the base was just really pulling the attraction down and also they just didn't really fit you know you got real leaves with painted stuff so what I did was you can either use some sort of green shade but I'm mostly going to stick to agrax so it blends in with the rest of my base so I'm just going to chuck some agrax earth shade on top of all these leaves throughout and I think this is what really really nailed this whole base down now that the basing's done I had to do the last thing here and it's probably the most tedious and annoying thing I've had to do because this is actually a first for me. I'm using Micro Sol and Micro Set for the first time because I hate doing decals or water transfers, whatever people call them. And apparently this stuff really, really helps. I've had it for all like two, three years and never really had reason to use it much. So basically what I had to do was paint this on top of the transfer with a paintbrush and I dabbed it down with a, an earbud every now and again just to try and get it nice and flush. But once it dried, I'd go over again with micro set just to soften it, try and smooth it. I, I did this quite a few times throughout the entire army, just trying to get them really, really flush. Once you do have it flush and everything looks good and all that kind of stuff, that's when you go over your transfers with micro sole. And that kind of just helps set everything, get everything looking less shiny and stuff. Now, I think you have to do a few coats of this as well. I did a few, but later once I varnished the model and everything, all that shininess and all that will also go away. But with that said, let's have a quick little showcase of the entire army done. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. Got the entire 500 points combat patrol slash boarding actions army done. Like I said a million times before, there, there's some things I need to clean up and go back up to, but I just wanted something to actually be finished for once. But I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think uh, it's fine to kind of cut corners sometimes just to get stuff done? I think everybody's always their kind of worst critic in these things. But I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell. I usually don't really care too much about saying that but this video took me a really long time to do. 
So I would much appreciate any sharing and liking, subscribing and stuff like that. And of course, if this video does really well and you guys comment below if you'd like me to maybe expand this army, like do another 500 points, maybe 1,000 points, bring it up to a 1,000 point army, 1,500 point army. If people want to watch it and they want to see it, I will do it. Now, obviously, another thing, if you would want me to do a more in-depth painting guide or basing guide or anything like that of anything in this video, please let me know as well because I've kind of brushed through everything so this video is not three hours long. But once again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I've put a lot of effort into this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.